out of the rock. So you are going to look at your neighbor. You are going to sing that song and somebody do many it. That it doesn't matter. Oh, my God will make a way. Go ahead. Then God will make a way. I know my God will make a way. I know my God will make a way. I have done around us. It doesn't matter the challenges of life that we face. It doesn't matter who even is waging war against us. It doesn't matter if the way appears short and the, there is barrier along our path. There is one thing we know that you will always make a way. When there seems to be no way, you always make a way. Lord, we are grateful unto you because we have you as our God and our Father. And we have that conviction and the assurance in us. You will always make a way for us. It doesn't matter whether we are born in this land, you will make a way for us. It doesn't matter how we speak our English, you will make a way for us. It doesn't matter the color of our skin, you will make a way for us. Because the land belongs to you, and you always make a way. Lord, we are grateful unto you. Mighty God has said our praise and thanksgiving, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. The time has come for us to hear from you. Lord, speak to us in Jesus' name. In a language that we all understand, Father, speak to us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. You may be seated. Just say to yourself, the Lord will make a way for me. In this land, the Lord will make a way for me. I have not come to manage, I have come to excel. The God I serve is not a local champion. If he could make a way for the people of Israel in the Red Sea, he will make a way for me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This morning, I have, I'm wrapping up our message that has been entitled, I will receive air from above. M my colleagues have come to do justice to this topic. So my job is just to wrap it up. <clears throat> my voice may be cracking. Don't worry, the Lord will make a way. You know, I will, I've been battling cold for the past one week, but you know it's the victor now. Code cannot conquer me. He cannot even stop me from coming to preach the word of God. So just pay attention. Do not be distracted with how coarse my voice may be. But the Lord has a message for you. The title of the message is Lifting Up Your Eyes Unto the Hills. Lifting Up Your Eyes to the Hills. And our scripture is taken from Psalm 1 and 21. And I will read verse 1, and one to 2. He said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence come my help? My help come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. This is a man who knows how to be a victor. This is a man who knows how to win battle. This is a man who is not intimidated by the challenge of life. And he knows how to do one thing. He knows how to lift his eyes to the hills. Because he knows that that's the only way where his help will come from. 
And when you look at the way that scripture is written, he said, I will, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. He didn't say to hills. He said to the hills. It means there are some hills that are special. It's not Kilimanjaro. It's not like any other hills. I will lift my eyes to the hills. When you look at it in Yoruba Bible, maybe Pastor, Pastor Vodu will help me. The way it is written in Yoruba Bible show that it is not like any other hill. It says, Emiyo Gwyoju Misi Oroke Wane. Wane on the line. That is the hill. It, it's, these are hills that are above every hill. These are hills that are not just like any other hills. The hills, not to the hills. And I know that in every language, they make emphasis to that hills. The Yoruba say one. They, they are precious, and you cannot find them easily. That is one. That is, I will lift up my, my eyes to the hill. Whatever come my way, I will lift my eye to the hill. These are not just ordinary ease, like I said. They are not just one. They are not just two. The hills. They are, these are ease like no other ease. If you look at the second verse, it is not about that this special ease. It's about he who dwell on the top of the hills. He said, I will lead my eyes to the hills. From where comes my help? That is where my help is coming from. My help is not just coming from the hills. It's coming from the God who is sitting upon the hills. He is the one that created the heavens and the earth. He is Jehovah Elion, the most high God, who is seated upon the hill. He is available on every hill to dish out help for you and I. This God is everywhere. He has his own names. So on the top of every hill is different Jehovah, who is the same God. On one hill is the Jehovah Rapha. On the other hill is Jehovah Rohi. On the other hill is the Jehovah Shama. On the other hill. So anything you need in life, there is the Jehovah sitting upon the top of the hill, ready to hear your cry for help. He's always ready to deliver help. Number one, on these hills, El Shaddai is sitting there. Are you in need of anything? Are you lacking anything? Is there anything that your heart desires that is far from you? Remember, the El Shaddai is sitting upon the hill. The only thing he's doing is waiting for your cry for help. And he is ready, ever ready, to give that help. Genesis chapter 22, verse 13 to 14. And Abraham raised his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the ticket by his horns. And Abraham went and looked the ram and offered him for a burnt offering in the place of his son. And Abraham come to that place that the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. Whatever you lack, whatever you need, whatever your heart desire, El Shaddai is sitting upon the hills. He's looking, he's waiting to hear your voice. The problem we have is that we know how to murmur, how to complain. God does not listen to complain. God listen to, to, to the cry of his children. Ask, you shall receive. Look at what happened here. There was no chance of Abraham getting sacrificed to replace Isaac. But the Lord made provision, and the Bible says, Abraham called the place that Lord will provide. As it is said today, in the month of the Lord, it will be provided. So, are you lacking anything? The great provider is sitting on the hills. All you need to do is to lift your eyes to the dwelling place of the El Shaddai. 
you need to ask for help. You need to ask for help. Everything is available. He can provide all that you need. The Lord can meet all my need. He is more than our sufficiency. He is our great provider. Brethren, sometimes we, we cheat ourselves by not asking. Whatever it is, the Lord will make a way. I remember many years ago, I was tired of just studying in Nigeria. I wanted to move out. And I wanted to go out of Nigeria for, for my PhD. And I, I tried to look out to men. I knew my sister worked in the Ministry of Education. There are many scholarships that were going out there. And so I told my sister, I need scholarship. And I applied for Commonwealth Scholarship. And that she used all the influence she, she has in the ministry. And I knew that year in the Ministry of Education, my number was number 13 on the list of those who are going to get Commonwealth Scholarship. That is looking on the man for help. But when the, when the list gets to the minister's table, they change the list. So if you, if you know that, in general, there are ministers who can change the list. But when you know the one that controls the affairs of the universe, nobody can stop you. Oh, we saw later on that there was nothing coming from. By the time the list came out, my name was missing. In fact, every name on the list sent by the director general in the Ministry of Education were replaced by the candidate for the ministers. So why do I need to look up the minister when the power of the minister is under the power of the, of the head of state? But why don't I look unto God who can make provision for everything? And that's what I'm saying this morning. I wish you look unto him, the earth shall die, that sits upon the hill. And when, the, when I realize that vain is help from man, so I went back to God. I said, God, I need you to give me this thing. Man cannot give it to me. I cry unto God for help. And what happened was this. I have told you this story in the past. And I, 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 I went before my father in law, Baba Obadari, Pastor Apostle Obadari. And I said, Baba, I don't know what's happening. I apply for scholarship every time. I see it going and nothing come back. He said, Why is it that you get, you apply, you never get results? I said, I don't know. He said, For the next three months, the last three of the month, go and ask and pray to God about it and move to the next person. He was only asking me, I need to ask, pray about it. He didn't even tell me anything. And I, be, I just did exactly what he asked me to do. And I just pray hard, asking God to make way. I may not know the minister. I may not know commissioner. Many of you may not know. My father was a farmer. My mother was a mad wife. I knew nobody. And so I pray and I seek the counsel of God. My wife and I will pray for three months. And December that year, on the 1st of December, as we were about to begin to pray for the new year, that was 1995, the Lord said, do not ask me anything today, this month. Ask for my power. You need my power. Don't ask anything for the new year, just my power. Even the scholarship, don't, talk, don't think about it. And we pray continuously for the old December 1995, asking for God's power. And on January 1, 1996, the Lord came in the night to my wife and said, Daughter, do you know why your husband has not get answer to that prayer of traveling abroad for his scholarship for the past three years? My wife said, he doesn't know. He talked to your servant. The servant didn't give him answer. So he asked him to go and pray, and we are praying. The Lord said, because three years ago, he was not spiritually mature enough to handle the blessing that was coming. I want him to grow so that he can be able to handle it. I have no pleasure in him traveling abroad and losing his salvation. His soul is more important to me than, than any, anything else. What am I saying here? God will not give you, even when you look onto the hill for the help, something that you are not spiritually mature enough to, to, to contain. To you, it might look like, like fish, but at that point, it might be scorpion because you are not spiritually mature to be able to handle the blessing. So, brethren, as you are looking onto the hill, as you are crying to God, make sure you increase your spiritual capacity. Make sure you increase. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. The Jehovah Rapha is sitting on the hills. That's the God that heals. The doctor might, might have told you their conclusion. 
Doctor might say there, must, there is no more hope. Our doctors in the house will only tell you that we, we only treat, only God can heal. So whatever it is, he is the God that healed us. Are you trusting God for healing? Look, lift your eyes unto the hill, unto Jehovah Rapha that sits upon the hill. Genesis 15, 26. And he said, if you give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, and give ear to his commandment, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases on you, which are put on the Egyptians, for the, I am the Lord your healer. So the Lord Jehovah Rapha is on the top of the hills. But there are some things he said there. If you do what is right in his eyes, if you give ear to his commandments, if you keep all his statutes, it becomes easy for you to assess help from Jehovah Rapha. Matthew 14, 34, 6. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Genesaret. And when the men of the place recognized Jesus, they sent him out into all that surrounding region and brought to him all who were sick and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. As many as touched it were made perfectly whole. Brethren, do not be intimidated when doctors give their verdict. In fact, many of you have heard from me several years ago, both my family doctor, my neurosurgeon, and uh, the neurologist, they concluded that it would be difficult for me to be on my feet in years to come. Because there was, there was something happening here. And they said, the only way we can solve this is to go to the, to the, to the surgery. We have to do surgery of your neck, otherwise you'll be on the wheelchair. But I know I cannot preach the gospel on the wheelchair. And God has taught me not to argue with doctors because he created them. He, he taught me a lesson, don't argue with them. You can cry to me, just, just let them do their work. And when they gave me the, all the paperwork, my wife and I, we said, well, that is the body of the doctor. I'm going to surrender myself for the surgery, but let me go to the one who is the Jehovah Rapha himself. We went on three days retreat. We, we, pray, we placed the paper before God. I said, God, we will not dictate to you. If you want to use doctor, you can use doctor, but we prefer that you do this one yourself without using this doctor so that they know that you are God, Jehovah Rapha. And by the time we came back after that prayer, we left the city, we went to the corner three, months, three days. All we need to do is to ask. To assess the help, we need to ask. And by the time we went back, all, all the three of them are still surprised to today. They told me we thought it was going to get worse, but it's getting better. All the pains were gone. Then they told me, if you feel this sign, this sign, this sign, rush to the emergency. Over seven years ago, I have not rushed to the emergency. I am not going to rush to the emergency. Because I know how to cry for help from the one that can heal. The time we spend to cry and weep and mourn and, 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 and call pity party. Let's use the time to call upon the Lord God of Israel. When, the time you are discussing the sickness with somebody who only pity you, why don't you spend the time to talk to God? Jehovah Nisi is sitting on the hill, the Lord of Habana. I can go on and on and on. Jehovah Sabbat is sitting upon the hill. When, when, when the enemy rise, rise up against you, you remember that the Lord God we serve is the Lord God of hosts. He, there, is a, there is an heaven's army. The Lord fights for his own. You know, you, sometimes when you fight for yourself, you just waste your time. Several years ago, before I, got, before I came to this city, somebody waged war against me for nothing, simply because he didn't like my boss, and I became his, his arch enemy. He, what belongs to me, he took away from me. And to, to show me there was nothing I could do about it. And I was fighting. I, I went to him. I was struggling. The Lord said, why are you fighting for yourself? Do you know that you can call on me to fight this battle? And I told my wife, it's time again to retreat. That's why if you are a husband and you are not in accord with your wife, you are calling all the time. You are wasting your time. You are wasting your life. Because when two of you agree together on anything, Oh my God, the devil cannot stand you. But many of us are struggling because even you and your wife cannot pray together for five minutes. We went away to pray. 
And as I was coming down, the Lord said, don't worry again, it is settled. And I got back, they started looking for me. What that man took away from me, they were begging me with it. And I said, what happened? They said, they said, they should look for you and give back to you. That is the God we serve. Do, rather than begin to fight men, cry unto Jehovah Sabah, the Lord God of hosts. When the people of Israel were about to enter into the land of promise, they saw a man. And when Joshua saw that man, he said, are you for us or against us? No, we are ready for battle. He said, ah, you want to fight? I'm the captain of the Lord's army. Jesus is the captain of the Lord's army. Unless somebody can defeat Jesus, then they can defeat you. Since no one can defeat Jesus, no one, no power, no demon, no, no devil can defeat you. But you need to cry unto God. Am I making sense, anybody? And are you lacking peace? Look unto the east. Jehovah Shalom is sitting there. The Lord our peace. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Are, are, are you lacking in direction? Jehovah, 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 Jehovah Roi, also called Jehovah Ra, the Lord our shepherd, is on the road. He said, he lead me through the green pastures. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. The Lord is there. You don't know where to go, cry unto God for direction. He is the good shepherd who can do anything for his sheep. Rather than wasting time to agonize, to, to complain, it's, it's time to go to him and cry for help. So what we are saying today, this month, is our help will come from above. From, all, from God, who has all these great attributes. There's nothing that you need that you cannot find in that attribute. It could be Jehovah Rapha you are calling. It could be Jehovah Roy. It could be Jehovah Shalom. It could, Je Je Jehovah, it could be Ashada. He's a great provider. And he will provide for you in Jesus' name. But the only thing is that God only help those who cannot help themselves. There is a saying that we normally say, say in Nigeria. And sometimes you, you hear it several times, you think it is scripture. And it's not scripture. They will say, heaven help those who can help themselves. That's not scripture. Heaven help those who cannot help themselves. When you realize that you are helpless, and you cry unto God for help, the Lord will help you. But when you can help yourself, God will leave you because you don't need him. But when you realize that you need help, you cry unto God. That he said, I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything that is too hard for me? When I look unto men, you fail, but when you look unto God, that Lord Almighty God will come through for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So assessing this help, don't forget I made it clear. You need to ask. You need to ask for help. When, when that blind man came to Jesus, pastor was preaching about that this morning. Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? God wants to hear your voice. In fact, there was a time he told me, I want you to be specific. We were pastoring the church in Germany, and where we were was no longer comfortable for us. We were saying, God, please provide us a place of worship. God provide. And he said, he said, stop. When do you want it? I want to hear from you when you want a new place of worship. I said, God, before the end of December, and we were in November. At the beginning of December, a church in town gave us a place to use free of no charge because I cry for help. You need to cry and be specific. Lord, this is what the doctors have said. But this is what your word says. And you are the Jehovah, you are the Jehovah Rapha. I'm believing you for healing. And God will do it. In the mighty name of Jesus. In, 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 in Matthew, someone say, ask, it will be given to you. So it means it will be given to you only when you ask. Seek and you will find. And knock, it will be open for you. If you come to my house, you stay by the door, sir, you don't knock the door, I will not know you are here. Even God knows that you need it, but God wants you to ask. That's why he told that man, what do you want me to do for you? Number two, you must learn to ask in faith. <clears throat> Ask in faith. <clears throat> because if you ask and you, in, not in faith and you doubt, the Bible says you are just like a wave of sea, driven and tossed around. He said, let that man not think he will receive anything from God. Brethren, when you have to ask from God, you have to trust in him. You have to believe him. What are you going to believe in? You have to believe in his faithfulness. This God that we serve is faithful. If he has promised it, he will do it. Some people <clears throat> cheat themselves and say, oh, it was a promise he made to, his, to, uh, to Abraham. 
or he made it to David. Every scripture in the Bible is for me to claim. And uh, for you to assess. Believe that faithful is he that has called you. And he will do and accomplish whatever he says. Amen, somebody. Amen. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 3 says, For the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. So number one, you must trust in his faithfulness. Know that this God is faithful. Even when the people of Israel did not believe, Moses believed God was, will make a way, even in the Red Sea. He trusted in God's faithfulness. And when God said, move forward, stretch for your, your, your rod, he didn't, he didn't doubt. He did exactly because he knew God, was, whatever he says he would do, he would do. Number two, you must also believe that he is able. He's able. He's able. I know my God is able. I know my God is able to carry me through. God is able to carry you through that storm. God is able to make a way for you in this land. God is able to, to, to take you to any level in this land. If God shows to make you a prime minister in this land, no demon can stop him. Remember that you God you serve is the almighty God. It's the one that walk and no man can hinder. Do not allow men to intimidate you. Do not. I remember you, when, when, my, when my daughter finished uh, medicine and she was applying for, I, I'm not bragging here, but I'm talking about, I'm talking fast. I was looking for residency in, <clears throat> in dermatology. And they were only going to give only one in this, in this province. Even somebody come to her who think they are the one in position. I said, you, you don't think about it, you can't get it. And my daughter looked and said, you don't know me. But when he came out, we cried unto God. I said, God, we, we claim that, that, that single position. And when the result came out, only that one gave to her. Why? Because we know how to assess her from the above. The one that thought they have power, they know people, they only were surprised. Our God is able to do all things. Man may not be able to help, but God can make it to happen. I might make it sense to you. And he's always available. I remember the gods of Ba when they were on, on, on that Monday. And uh, Elijah said, maybe he's sleeping. Maybe he went on, 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 on a journey. But this God is always available. The Bible says, I, I lift up my eyes unto thee. We are come my help. My help come from God who created heaven and earth. He said, a night that sleep nor slumber. So it is never asleep. It's available for you 24-7. So it is your responsibility to call on him. The time you spend to complain and grumble, call on him. The time we begin to complain about, the, about how, how dry Canada is, call upon the name of the Almighty God. He will make a way for you. And lastly, he will cares for you. You have to trust that this God cares for you. First Peter 5, 6, 7 says, Therefore, humble, the, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. So, that is important. Then, don't forget number three, you must increase continually your spiritual capacity. I mentioned that at the beginning. Lord will not give to you what you have no capacity to, to be able to handle. That is important. It is very, very important. It says in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12, verse 12 says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you against the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need meek and not solid food. So if, you, if you, all you need is meek, God will not give you solid food, if you know you cannot digest it. So if you want to get to great height in this land, get ready to serve the Lord. Get, to, get ready to increase your spiritual capacity because you need that to be able to, to stay there. And most importantly, to be able to assess this help, you must be one of his own. And must, you must live your life in accordance with his commandment and his status. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 says, Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands. He cannot change. Having this seal, the Lord knows those who are his, that everyone who named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. 
So you must, if you, are, if you are going to be able to look onto the hill and cry for help from the one who is able to deliver this help, you must be born again. Not only that, because there are many people who are born again today who are living life in the flesh. You must live a life that is in alignment with his command, with his status. Because the Bible comes to understand that the sacrifices of, the, of, the, of a sinner is an abomination before God. Look at Proverbs chapter 15, verse 8 to 9. He said, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But the prayer of the upright is his delight. So if you want your prayer to be delight, when you ask, you want God to answer you, then make sure that you depart from everything that is called iniquity. As I close, when I came to this land, I saw people who were sovereign. And then we asked God, what is the secret of this land? Why were people sovereign in Toronto? The people in Nigeria look better than them. And the Lord told, told my wife a vision, which I will repeat again, two rivers. She saw a river that was full of gold, a river was full of peaches. And she saw the multitude. They were going to the river that was full of gold. And once they carry gold, they will go, they will go back. They were going back and forth. They carry gold, they go back. No rest, no peace. And they saw only very few were going to the river where were fishes. And the Lord asked her, do you understand what you are saying? He said, no. The Lord said there are two believers, Christians, that come to this land. There are people who thought they, come, they have come here to make money. They are the ones that go to the river with gold and to carry gold. He said the reason why they are going back and forth is because the devil just flees away from their hand. That's why you see them walking 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week, not to show for it. He said, but those who you see go to the river where the fishes are, all oh, those who said, I'm here first and foremost to serve God's purpose. In this land, I'm going to serve God. He said, that's why you see them, they go there, they carry only one fish. He said, because everything that they needed, they need in the land is in the belly of the fish. The Almighty God that turned the belly of the fish into a bank. So what are you looking for in this land? Are you looking for us to go to this land to, to serve yourself, to serve your own agenda, or you want to make God's agenda first? That's what I did. I made up my mind. Lord, you alone, you first, every other to follow. And the Lord took care of every other thing. Each time I called, look unto thee, he answered me, because I gave him the right of place. What rise up on your feet and say, Father, Lord Jesus, I come before you today, Lord God. I'm asking, oh Lord God, the grace, oh Lord, to surrender all to you, to give the right of place in my life. Lord, release upon me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's talk to God, say, Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I look unto you. I ask for the grace, oh Lord, mighty God, to live a life that is pleasing unto you, to give it the right of place in my life. So that when I cry, or when I look, see, set my eyes on the ear, when I cry for help, so that my help will not be hindered. Lord, I ask for the grace, O oh Lord Jesus, to live a life that is in consonant, that is in, that aligns with your commandment. And if you have not given your life to Christ, this is time to cry unto God, Jesus. The Lord, the Bible says, the prayer of the wicked is an abomination to him. So God knows those who are his. If you are not a child of God, if you are not giving your life to Christ at any point in time, if you look unto the heal, the Lord is not duty bound to deliver her. But if you have not given your life to Christ, you have the opportunity tonight, you can, this, this afternoon, you can lift up your hand, your hand, I will see you and I pray with, with you. Say, Lord, I come to you. Lord Jesus, I come to you. Say, Jesus, I come to you. Lord, have your way in my life. I surrender my life unto you. I cannot help myself. I need you in my life as my divine neighbor. Come talk to God right now. Say, Lord, I, I surrender my life unto you. And those of us, us, us that begin to pray, what is the help that you are looking unto God for? And he says, I will lift my eyes unto the heal. Won't you look unto him now? Are you trusting God for one thing? Just begin to mention it. I trust God for healing. Say, Lord, you are my healer. Are you trusting God for peace? There is no peace in your heart. Say, Lord, you are looking unto you for peace. What are you trusting God for? Say, Lord Jesus of Nazareth, I cry unto you today. I lift my eyes unto you. This is what I'm trusting for. Is it that job? Your career is not settled. Say, Father, make a way concerning my career. Whatever has been an hindrance before now, 
Lord, begin to take them out of my way in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you are a doctor, you are an engineer, you are a lawyer, it is the plan of God for you to serve in your profession in this land. Say, Lord, take down every barrier. Every barrier, Lord, take them down in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. And as your prayer, so shall it be in Jesus' name. The Lord will make a way for you. Where there seems to be no way, heaven will make a way for you. In your career, the Lord will make a way. Those who have written you up will come calling for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever it is that you think cannot be reversed, heaven reverse them. Because the Lord will accept your cry. And so shall live in Jesus' name. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Now, now, for you to know God make a way, there was no way I could speak for two, five minutes as I was sitting down there without coughing. But I know it will make a way here. And I will speak. And that is what God, I was, man of God, when you are, when you are praying, I was sitting down here, I was asking God, I'm not going to just go and be coughing on that table. You must heal me. And that is what God can do. And the Lord Almighty God, we perfect all that is yours in Jesus' name. Shall we share the grace together in fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and as we fellowship with the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Those who are coming for the first time, can you wave to Jesus? Wave to Jesus. I can see where you are. Wave to Jesus. Altar, can you lead them? Please carry your Bible. Altar, please lead them to the, to the welcoming room. Our altars and pastors are waiting for you to welcome you there, to pray with you, and to give you a token of our love. Keep clapping for them as they are going out. Come on, keep clapping. Keep clapping for them. Please come forward. Please come forward. Please come, 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 come. Please come, 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 come. Keep clapping for them. It is your club that the club is bringing them out. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. We are so blessed. We are so honored to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are blessed. Thank you for joining us. If you are joining us for the first time, let's see you here. God bless you. Amen. Do we have everybody here? Choir, I love this family of God. I love this, this family, family of God. God. Let's join our hands together. Closely. So closely we turn into one, into one that's taking me into the hands of God. So glad to be a part of this great family. We are here. We are here. And say you are my brother and you are my sister. Go ahead. You're my brother. You're my sister. We are joined. We are sons. We are children of the kingdom. We are father. Week. 